It was a silly mistake. I've been driving on the buses for years. Never have I made such a stupid mistake. I did check my blind spots, but I just didn't lean forward. I just couldn't see him. It was only a low speed impact. I must have been going no more than five miles an hour, but he banged his head on the windscreen and then again on the floor. I mean, he looked fine. I just went into a bit of a daze. Things went so slowly. I will never forget. It was like a lifetime before the paramedics arrived. The frustrating thing is, it was all so avoidable. We all know about blind spots. We drive every day, we're professionals, but that one lapse can lead to a deadly error. A blind spot is an area of hidden ground caused by the vehicle's bodywork. There are multiple blind spots around your bus, which are points where there is limited or no visibility around your vehicle without adjusting your body position. On the left, the main ones are at 10 and 11 o'clock. The viewpoint is restricted at several points during a manoeuvre, or even when parked at a bus stop and incurs the most incidents. Clearly shown on multiple blind spots when looking left at this area from the driver's cab. At 12 o'clock there is a full blind spot under the cab, which children or elderly pedestrians may pass in front of while stopped. On the right there is a 1 o'clock blind spot, which can be even more restricted due to the mirror positioning. This blind spot has similar issues as the 10 and 11 o'clock blind spots when turning right. The mirror at this point can be adjusted to reduce the blind spot's area and increase visibility. Most collisions occur when turning into a junction, especially when there are many pedestrians, for example entrances to bus stations and turning into town centres. This diagram shows the extent of a bus's blind spot, 8 o'clock through to 11 o'clock. Vehicle design plays a large part in increasing blind spot areas, and then the driver's failure to check the blind spot areas when in motion and when undertaking a manoeuvre. People walk at approximately 4 miles an hour. When a bus slows to turn a 90 degree bend, it also slows to approximately 4 miles an hour. This movement enhances the blind spots, as both the pedestrian and the vehicle are moving at the same pace, meaning the pedestrian may remain in the blind spot for the duration of the manoeuvre. We all know where these blind spots are. We now need to eliminate them. As a driver, we are responsible not only for the passengers on board, but the pedestrians around us. We must lean to look into the blind spots area before making any manoeuvre. Lean and learn before you turn. Look around into the hidden ground. Right, so there's two ways to check your blind spot, an incorrect way and a correct way. I'm going to demonstrate the incorrect way first. This would be to exaggerate the check, where as you move your whole body over to look out the window, you get your head close to the window, your fire will come off the chair, your back will move away from the backrest. So what happens when your body moves, your right leg moves unintentionally, you cover the gas pedal instead of the brake, and then when you need to brake, you put your foot down thinking you're on the brake, and you end up maybe crashing into a vehicle in front, a building, or even worse, a pedestrian. So the correct way to do the blind spot check, you keep your left thigh on the chair, your back stays against the backrest. This allows you to lean over, check your blind spot, as you come back, your right leg hasn't moved, you're still covering the brake, which will help prevent foot placement error and give everyone a good, safe experience. This is a visual explanation of tail swings, overhangs and projections. When a plane takes off and lands, the most dangerous part is the takeoff and landing process. 
With buses, most collisions occur when pulling into and away from bus stops. A number of bus stops don't present a hazard as they are free from obstructions. However, in today's world, many bus stops do have obstructions and can cause incidents involving overhangs and projections front and rear. What is an overhang on your bus? At the front, it is the distance from the front wheel to the front of the bus. The projection is the extended mirror arm on the near side. At the rear, the overhang is the distance from the rear wheels to the back of the bus. When a bus turns and the overhang goes over the pavement, we refer to this as a tail swing. Looking at this example, there is already a bus at the bus stop and we have to stop close to the gap in the railings to allow the customers to board and alight. If we stop too close to the kerb and too close to the vehicle in front, when pulling away, we risk colliding with the bus in front. With the near side mirror arm, which is projected forward of your bus, also the near side tail swing colliding with the railings as you pull away. How can we make this safer? There are a number of options. The first option is to wait for the bus in front to go first. In all situations, when stopping behind another bus already stationary, do not assume the bus will be moving soon. The bus could have broken down, it could be waiting for a driver changeover, or there may be another reason the driver is not with the vehicle. Therefore, when stopping behind a bus, you should stop in a position where you have room to pull around. You should always aim to get close to the kerb for customers. But because of the tail swing, you will need to stop at an angle with the rear wheel slightly away from the kerb and the railings. If you don't stop at an angle, this is how close your rear overhang will come to the railings and potentially even collide with the railings as you pull away. If customers are alighting, always ask them not to walk down the side of the bus between the railings and the vehicle. Before you pull away, you must always make sure there was no one between your bus and the railings. In this example, we have two vehicles parked before and after the bus stop. If you see this on approach, the ideal situation is to stop before or after the bus stop, assuming it is clear, safe and legal to do so. When stopped in this position, you will need to lower the platform and take a good look in your near side mirror. If you cannot stop before or after, you should stop parallel with the vehicle. Approach the bus stop slowly, indicating you wish to pull up to the stop. Look out for vehicles that may want to pull out. Let them do so, as it may give you the space required to pull up to the stop. Be aware of pedestrians emerging from between packed vehicles, also cyclists who may attempt to undertake your bus. How do I position my bus? The wrong way is trying to stick your front overhang into the gap in between the packed vehicles. When you do this, there is a risk of colliding with the vehicle in front of you as you attempt to pull away. You may also collide with the vehicle behind as your tail swing will sweep to the left. In addition, your offside rear corner may encroach into the path of other vehicles. The right way is to stop in a position so that vehicles parked on your left are boxed in and cannot move off or undertake your bus whilst you are stationary. Difficulties may be encountered with one car just before the bus stop when pulling in at too sharp an angle. Here you can see the bus mirror arm nearly collides with the bus stop and the front overhang skims over the race kerb and in fact in this example the bus collides with the race kerb. As the bus continues to straighten up there is a great risk of the rear of the vehicle colliding with the parked car. Wherever there is an obstruction at a bus stop, it is completely acceptable and expected that you can stop before or after the bus stop pole or shelter. When stopped in this position, you will need to lower the platform and take a good look in your near side mirror, as cyclists may try to pass you on the near side. Of course it goes without saying, if somebody with a wheelchair, pushchair, buggy or pram is attempting to board or alight, you will have to continue past the park vehicles and find the nearest safe and legal place to stop. Here is an overhead view showing the tail swing across the pavement when pulling away at various distances from a park vehicle and the kerb. This is the wrong way. Too close to the vehicle in front and too close to the kerb. 
If you have to stop too close to the vehicle in front, you can position your bus a distance away from the curb. However, there is an increased risk of cyclists passing on the near side. Plus, if elderly or disabled people or people with prams and pushchairs wish to board or alight, you will need to get the entrance platform closer to the pavement edge. If you are operating a bus with multiple doors, you should request that customers use the front doors to board and alight only in this scenario. In this final example, a car is parked in a bus layby. When pulling in at an increased angle due to a parked vehicle, be aware of your front overhang and the projection of the mirror arm. In this scenario, you need to reduce the approach angle and go beyond the bus shelter to straighten the vehicle in the lay-by. This will prevent the tail of the bus being in a live lane on a fast road.